So guys, we finally got our first look inside of the Nintendo Switch. And honestly, after checking out a lot of the pictures and just doing some reading and everything, the system internally actually looks really good. So I'm gonna go over some of these pictures with you guys. Uh, the first one I kind of want to look at is what appears to just be a picture of the backing removed from it. I assume with that metal cage removed as well, since it's in kind of the top left of that picture. But right away, it's we can see just how compact this entire system is it's it's very very packed like it's jammed in there that battery uh that's probably about the maximum size battery they could put in there without making the overall size of the system bigger and of course the big thing was to keep it small keep it uh, portable as best they can and yes the, the system itself in person was very small without the joy cons it's very small with the joy cons it's a little wider obviously but it gives you a nice grip that your thumbs don't then overlap the screen and cover things up so yes i kind of expect it to be packed but this is uh almost like a jigsaw put together which is really cool so when i kind of went over this I, I looked at it from my perspective which i take a lot of systems apart i fix a lot of systems i I'm always appreciative when the system appears to be more modular than not, and this system looks like it will be very easy to repair. So of course, with the back off, we can see a very large, very large heat pipe. It, it, okay, so it's large relative to the system. Of course, it's not large compared to like, say, a, a one of those massive heat pipes from like a like a Alienware computer, a laptop, or an iBuy Power, something like that, where they have massive you know heat pipes going through there. But keep in mind, guys, this is on a mobile chipset that is located on what is essentially the base unit, which is a tablet. So that's that's pretty impressive that it needs a large heat pipe like that with a fan attached to it in what is a 6.2 inch tablet. The other thing I like when I'm looking at this is the battery does not appear to be too difficult to replace. Now, if you look to the right of this picture, you're going to see a bunch of screws that appear to be to the right of it. So it looks like there are quite a few screws to get into the system, but the battery itself is just a plug and play battery. I was kind of concerned you would have to desolder it and solder it because there are a lot of tablets that save the cost. Even if it's just a little bit, when you're manufacturing, you know, millions of these things, it adds up. They could usually save the cost of that connector that you push it onto by just soldering it. So I'm very happy that it is just a, almost like a, a plug and play battery, if you want to call it that. And I don't know if it's, from here, I can't tell if it's glued. It doesn't look like it is because it looks like they picked it up out of there without too much issue. Usually when it's glued and you try to remove it the, the battery will start to bend almost in this case it looks like when they did get it removed took a picture of the battery it was still flat so at least it looks like it's not completely glued to the system and, and could give issues getting it out of there the other things that i really like about the system the sd card slot appears to also be modular so if you mess up the sd card slot if you flip it over and jam it in backwards trust me guys you're you maybe you're laughing who would do that a lot of people do that trust me i've i have replaced game card slots and everything 3ds's uh even vita's surprisingly i managed to pull one off of one board put on the other by usually desolder it with hot air and then solder it back down so yes, I've done this. I've had to replace those. I've had to replace the SD card slots and 3DSs. Uh, people flip them around and jam them in there upside down. It happens all the time. So the fact that this is a modular part that when it becomes mass produced and starts being available on places like eBay and Amazon will probably be less than $10 is very appreciated. That is modular and so is the game card slot with the headphone jack. Headphone jack is another big one, guys. I replaced a lot of those through some very uh, interesting methods, like I said, because a lot of them are soldered, so you have to desolder them most of the times. I like that everything here is modular, that's awesome. The other thing that's modular that kind of caught me off guard appears to be the storage memory, appears to be modular. It's on a board that then looks like it plugs into the top of the main board, and I'm not 100% sure why this is. Now, there is a chance that they did this because the dev kits use, remember that used a slightly larger chip, I believe at 64 gigs. It's possible that they just changed them around and were sending them out that way. It maybe saved on uh, having to make multiple boards. Maybe that's why the dev kits are so cheap because of that. I, I, don't, I don't know. It's interesting. Or maybe Nintendo has plans to upgrade the internal space down the road. It's, it's interesting to think that, but maybe you see one that's like $350 for a 64 gig model or maybe 400 for like 128 gig who knows but it's interesting to note that that should be easily changeable or what's really cool is maybe if your uh maybe your storage gets corrupted internally and you can just replace it again it's modular uh but we'll have to see exactly how that works because i'm sure that also houses the operating system as well and from there we get to the main the main attraction of this whole photo shoot 
the NVIDIA CPU GPU combo, the system on a chip, the Tegra processor. This is it right here. And what I really liked when I first saw this picture is that it's definitely not a traditional old X1 chip. It's just not. Looking at it right away, it is either a revision of an X1, which is more than likely, to be honest. It's It probably is a second generation Maxwell. I'm saying probably because we don't know. But I can tell you from there, even though it looks very similar to another chip, it's definitely heavily customized. The other chip that I'm referring to is it looks very similar to the uh, and the newer Shield TV, the 2017 model. People have taken pictures and compared them. Looks very, very similar. However, the codes on the front for each die are different, which tells me that they were manufactured differently in terms of timing. And they were probably, they probably have different things in each one. I have a feeling the Nintendo's, uh, their Switches SOC is heavily customized to the point where it fits what Nintendo needs it to do rather than go into the NVIDIA Shield TV that is running Android and is mostly set up as like a streaming device and this is where it kind of kind of comes back to the whole we still don't know thing we, we really don't now the other thing that's kind of floating around is people are arguing that this may be a dev kit uh, that's interesting now for some reason this could have easily been debunked if the original poster had just taken a picture of the switch before they started taking it apart uh, they're also claiming that it was probably a defective unit and this this uh, company or this website appears to open the systems that are defective, part them out, and then sell the parts online to people who, of course, maybe they need a game card slot. They can buy it from this company and then install it in their system. So the only way we will definitively know what is in this chip is if we get it essentially x-rayed or scanned. And there are sites that can do this. Chipworks is very good about this. They do this with a lot of things, specifically mobile hardware, actually. If you go on there, you'll see they did an iPhone 7 or iPhone 6S, and they completely scanned the Apple's custom chip, and you could see everything that's going on there. You can see all the different CPU cores, which is really cool, and anything else in there. Maybe it has like an internal cache. We just don't know what's actually in this chip that warrants it having that different code from the typical X1 that's modified and put into the second generation Maxwell that's put into that Shield TV 2017. It also looks like the die is smaller than a typical X1 uh, that we saw, for example, in the Pixel C. That uses what appears to be a larger die and it's it's interesting. It is. It definitely looks like this is not the typical X1 that I think everyone was comparing it to or thinking was going to be in here. Like I said, the one in the Pixel C, for example, because they just don't look the same at all. They, like the die looks bigger on the Pixel C. It might just be my eyes. Maybe it's the pictures we're seeing. I don't have the Switch SoC right here and the Pixel C SoC right here, obviously. But based on what I've seen, based on what some of the guys on the different Reddit forums are talking about, it does look like people who actually own the Pixel C, for example. Um, it does look like the chip in, in the Switch has a smaller die than what is in that Pixel C we're still kind of back to square one. We at least know what the chip looks like, which is great. It's, it's awesome to have a close up of it. I do wish this person took better pictures of things like the RAM, for example. There is even a little chip that seems to work with the USB-C that would, that if we knew what that chip was and it was off the shelf, we'd be able to tell what, for example, the bandwidth is through that port that would then tell us if things like a future dock upgrade was possible. But this person is uh, probably not gonna take any more pictures. I'll say that. So I still think, I need to take mine apart. Like I've said before, even if anyone else takes it apart, these are just pictures. I will have full video. I'm easy to reach. So if people from, there are some pretty cool people on NeoGAF that know what they're talking about. Obviously there's people over on Reddit. Maybe they want pictures of specific chips and I will do that. I will do a full photo shoot with a nice camera and we will get to the bottom of what each one of these chips at least are labeled. So I think right now, like I said, we're still not sure 100%. It does look like the, the RAM is four gigs, two two gig modules, low power DDR4, probably roughly a bandwidth of 25 gigabytes a second, which may be a bottleneck for some developers. However, a lot of stuff is getting ported over. So maybe, again, there's something with that chip we're not sure about. It's possible maybe there's some kind of ES RAM maybe added to the chip, much like how the Xbox One has to help any memory bottlenecks. But we just don't know that scan will really, really help us. And it's just a matter of time before somebody does it. Unfortunately, I don't have an x-ray or machine or scanner to do that. So I can at least get more pictures of the entire thing. And I can also confirm at that point if this is a dev kit or not, because I will have a, obviously a full retail unit. So unfortunately right now, the debate for Maxwell and, and Pascal in this unit 
is raging on still. Now, it does look more like it is kind of waning in the favor of Maxwell. However, what's really funny about this whole situation is everyone was calling Pascal, or the next X1, the X2, right? Technically, technically, this is an X2 <laughs> because it is a revised X1, and it even has like X2, I think, printed on it, but it's actually pretty funny because this technically is an X2. It's not a P1 as far as we can tell right now anyway. We'll, when we get scans, we'll know more, but it's pretty funny to know that yes, this is probably an X2. So about 80% of the internet that was calling it the wrong thing in the first place uh, may have been right. So guys, I'm gonna leave you with this because there's still a lot going on here. I think there's still progress being made on figuring this stuff out. I think this is going to be an ongoing thing for the next week and a half at least before this comes out at retail and then somebody can scan it. Uh, I will say, looking internally to the Switch, I think it's worth the money. I think a lot of care went into this. This is not Nintendo's typical thing. I will say that looking at this, if somebody opened this up and I looked at it just how it is here with this picture you're seeing where the back is off and then told me Nintendo, this is a Nintendo product, I would not believe them because this definitely looks like N Nvidia had more of a part in this than Nintendo did at all. Um, the, the engineering looks great on this, on this piece of hardware. If we're to take things like the dock and the joy cons and stuff into consideration this is a pretty well priced product if in that case because the joy cons apparently are worth some decent money if they're selling them both at 80 bucks for example and the dock apparently is worth 90 but overall this tablet i mean i have to say the main unit of the switch is well priced and well put together so i think you could buy with confidence with the switch they obviously went overboard i think with the cooling although although when i did feel it like i said i was playing mario kart it was hot and the fan was running so yes the fan does run when it's portable uh maybe 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 in a lower game like for example uh let's say shovel knight when that comes out maybe the fan doesn't have to run for shovel knight because it's not producing enough power and maybe that's why the battery lasts five hours, for example, with something like that, as opposed to three hours with Zelda because the fan is probably running at 50 to 60% most of the time with Zelda because it is working really hard to render that entire world and process AI and all that stuff. So yeah, guys, after seeing the inside of the system, I'm very excited. I'm, I'm very happy what's going on here with Nintendo because this is not typical Nintendo fashion. This system is modular. It's well put together. It is not a screaming mess like the Wii U. Trust me, I've worked on Wii U's. The biggest biggest pain in my in my life is working on Wii U's. They are not fun to take apart. There's so much just unnecessary stuff happening in there for that what that system is. is it, it really is. But this system looks like I could get this thing apart quick, get everything out of there, replace it all, and put it all back together without too much issue. And it's nice to know I won't have to desolder card slots if somebody breaks one of their, their SD card slot or their game slot. I can just change it out. I mean, at this point, guys, looking at this, I feel like when I take mine apart and put it back together, you guys will get almost a little disassembly tutorial if you ever break your Switch, if like if like uh, like you damage the SD card slot or something, or maybe your battery starts degrading and you want to change it out. You guys will probably be able to watch my video, realize it's not that bad, and just take it apart yourselves. So yes, guys, this will be ongoing. I will keep you guys updated on this chip. Maybe we get a statement from NVIDIA at this point. Maybe we get a statement from Nintendo. Maybe that's not till after launch. Uh, or maybe, maybe we get very fortunate and this, this company that took us apart has a machine that can scan it. I don't think they care because this is a company that is taking this thing apart to then sell it for parts. So they probably won't, um, but I bet you after release, we will get some kind of update on this. I'll have pictures of it. I'll try to work together with some of the guys over on NeoGAF uh, and try to identify all the chips that we can. And that way we can have a, a good picture, a nice picture for what everything is doing there on the board. And what what is, I don't, here's the thing though. Here's the interesting thing about this. I do think over time, this switch will prove that it has some power to it. I really do. I think a lot of people were laughing at it originally that it could be a regular X1 in there, even a low powered one somehow that's running at like, what, a gigahertz? I don't think that's the case. I think this is a custom chipset that is that is set up to push visuals that we've never seen, never seen on a system this size. Don't always look at raw specs and graphics, guys, because sometimes it just comes down to figuring out how to put something this powerful out on a board that is literally being compared to the size of a DS cartridge for the chip. <laughs> so I'm excited. The Switch is gonna be awesome. I'm very, very happy to add it to my collection. It's 11 days out. I'll take it apart, of course, put it back together, and then 
it's, it's going to be Zelda for a while, guys. I'm sorry. You'll be watching streams of me playing Zelda for quite a while. Hopefully you guys don't mind that. But until then, guys, I will see you next time.